Hello, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to have a look at some of the bikes that we used in the 2023 Silk Road Mountain Race. And I'm going to try and ask the question, you know, what is the best bike and the best equipment to use for this particular race? So without further ado, let's get on. Um, if you've not seen it already, then I've got some other um, videos out about the race, including a race report and various things. So check those out and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing. Um, and hopefully I can bring some more over the coming months. Um, so yeah, this is the first bike. And uh, I mean, I've gone in with a good one, to be honest. Um, this is Alan Shaw's bike. Um, and he did the Silk Road Mountain Race on a cargo bike, which is pretty insane, to be honest, because it's tough enough as it is without having, you know, the extra weight of a cargo bike. Um, so he's, he's running this incredible Omnium, I think it's custom, but it's a titanium cargo bike. Um, it's just a, it's just a work, work of art. It's absolutely beautiful when you see it in the flesh. Um, and actually, to be honest, it's, it's not really not that heavy at all. Um, it's, it's surprisingly light. Uh, I was there at the start, um, obviously took part in the race. Um, you know, and you pick, pick the thing up and it, it kind of takes you by surprise how light it is. Um, and obviously the, the good thing about a cargo bike is you don't have to worry about where you're going to store all this stuff. You just chuck it on the rack on the front. Um, so yeah, I think it's got, um, it's, it's kind of like a, almost like a, a fabric cargo base and then you can strap the straps on uh, at the front here. Um, so yeah, Alan just basically had all his stuff in two massive dry bags on the front of the rack. A couple of water bottles. Obviously, if you need to carry extra water, you just chuck it on the front rack. Um, and yeah, he, he got round and completed the race. And uh, I mean, fair play. Um, some of those hiker bikes must have been pretty tricky on that. And the thing about a cargo bike is as well, the, the front wheel is not that big. So when you're doing a steep descent, um, it, it can be a little bit tricky in terms of grip. Um, so you see he's got a pretty chunky front tire on there. You, you just need it for the grip. Uh, run the Schwalbe tires. Um, but yeah, he got round. Um, so pretty awesome to see, to be honest. Um, and yeah, like I say, beautiful bike. And also it's very useful when, you're, um, when you've got to travel across town before a race and you've got five bike boxes or four bike boxes which you need to carry a couple of kilometers. Uh, it is very useful having a bicycle courier with a, um, with a cargo bike. Um, so let me just show you the little video that I, I took uh, when Alan took all our bikes across town before the start of the race. So here we go, we've got a, car, a bo box on the bottom and then three of the Avoc bags. Um, I kind of jokingly said to him before the start, oh, well, you've got a cargo bike so you can carry our stuff. And uh, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, baiting a, a cycle courier, you know, he was definitely gonna carry all that stuff. So <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, the next bike, Justinus Levica, um, he finished second on Tour Divide this year on the same bike. Um, he was third in the race probably one of the strongest guys and the most talented guys out there um he's running this this trek um i'm not actually sure what the model name is but it's got this iso coupling on the just on the, the where the junction of the uh the seat stays um and the seat tube is so it takes a little a bit of vibration out and i think that there's a lot of modern hardtails mountain bike hardtails and even gravel bikes now which have this kind of technology which you know i think it's really useful for these kind of races um just you know saving energy um and you know trying to reduce levels of fatigue there's a lot to you know lots to say for it so um yeah they, they, these make a lot of sense um running the rock shock sid fork up front he actually runs drop bars on his mountain bike now a few riders do that um i think i think certain riders have maybe come from more of a road orientated background and they just feel more comfortable on drop bars um i've run both at various races in the past i think there's merits Merits for, for both. I was running flat bars, mountain bike bars for this event, but I've done like things like Tour Divide on a drop bar bike. Um, so hand positions and things are more varied on a bike like this. Um, but yeah, it's personal preference, and I think both work. Um, so yeah, he's running um, he's running the SRAM Axis. I mean, the great thing about the SRAM Axis is you can mix and match. So he's got the the drop bar levers, uh, and he's also got the um, you know the, the mountain bike kind of the mullet setup with a big big gear rushes which you kind of need for the silk road you know so much elevation um however well i don't know if it's just justinus but some people have experienced kind of issues in things like tour divide when the conditions have been horrendous i don't think um i don't think justinus had any issues in this particular race but um i don't know for me there is a slight question mark over the SRAM axis in you know for day-to-day -day riding i think it's fine but for the long stuff like tour divide and stuff it, it can cause issues Having said that, I've never used it myself, um, so I'm going to try and um, get get some 
um, some access and try it out um, when I get the opportunity because uh, you know it's, it's, you can't always comment with authority unless you've tried it yourself and I haven't tried it so um, <laughs> you have to take that with a pinch of salt but as you can see he's running the tailfin stuff part of the tailfin R&D division um, I'm lucky enough to be on that myself um, really nice custom bags um, and running the kind of production bags on the top tube as well so yeah tailfin doing some really awesome stuff um, obviously I'm totally biased but uh, but there we go there and, you know I wouldn't be running that stuff um, without reason and yeah they, they, it just works really well uh, and running the hunt wheels um, so again I, I do do a bit of work for hunt and I, I basically look after riders such as Eustinas who are running the wheels in these events so these are a custom wheel set um, you'll see probably a couple crop up I was using the same um, so it's a Son front dynamo hub um, and then it's actually the 25 carbon gravel race rim which is is a little bit narrower but it's really light so 1600 grams around well, around 1600 grams um, for a dynamo wheel set j Ben spoke six bolt so serviceable um, you know you can change the rotors easily um, Justinus actually was a bit unsure about six bolt he wanted center lock but you know pointed out to him that you know with a center lock you can't really change that on the road but with a six bolt you've always got the multi-tool so you can always change a rotor um, so yeah, look things to think about. So yeah, that, that was Justinus' setup, um, you know, well proven for him. He always uses this funky saddle too. I, I don't actually know the brand, but it's, um, he swears by it, but it looks quite uncomfortable to me. But there we go, each of their own. Um, so yeah, that's Justinus' bike. Next up, um, Tristan Bugart. Uh, so Tristan, this was actually, the Silk Road Mountain Race was actually his first race. Um, he's, but he basically lives on the road. He's touring all the time. Um, spent a lot of time in, in Kyrgyzstan this this summer and the past few years. So I think this this bike is kind of reflective of that. So he's actually running this this pinion um, gearbox um, and a gates belt drive, um, which makes a lot of sense when you're touring you know, like nonstop, pretty much zero maintenance, um, like nothing to really go wrong. You know, you haven't got you know cables sticking out everywhere the, the, there isn't a chain with loads of links because of the belt drive you don't really need to lube the chain maybe just clean it off every now and again um so yeah quite a cool setup however it is quite heavy um you know his, his bike was relatively heavy um just because of the nature of you know you need quite a strong frame to mount the gearbox to and the you know the gearbox is just going to be heavier than a rear mech and cassette um but yeah kind of cool um running these auto lube bags and yeah, quite chunky tires actually. I would have run sli something slightly faster rolling. Um, but one thing I do like, and one th you know, probably come onto it if you've seen my bike check video. I had issues with you know basically getting animal crap all over my bottle down the bottom. But he's got one of these big kind of bigger bottles with a screw top on. So I'd probably run something like that if I were to do the Silk Road Mountain Race again. Um, but yeah, nice nice setup there. Something a bit different um, from Tristan. Um, so the next one is Manu Kotrus. He actually, he didn't finish in the end. Um, he had a bit pretty heavy crash, but he also rode this bike for the Highland Trail 550. Um, so yeah, it's well proven. 120 Sid Forks on the front there. He's again using the Hunt wheels. Um, so he's using the Proven XC wheels, which are a bit wider. Manu's got quite a, a mountain bike background, so he likes a real wide rim. This is the 30 mil internal. Um, so you get a bit extra volume, but they are slightly heavier than the, the custom wheels. I've had built for some of the other riders um, and he's laced up his own front wheel uh, rim onto a, a son hub again um a lovely chiru i think it's the divider um so man who came second at the tour divide on this bike uh, second at highland trail on this bike um so it's well proven um he again he's running he, he decided he's run axis before but uh you know man who works in a bike shop he's really hands-on with his bikes he knows what he's doing and he actually decided to run mechanical SRAM. Um, let me move my face out of the way. You can see he's, he's running mechanical SRAM. Um, I don't know if it's GX, I think it's GX. Um, basically for serviceability, um, because he wasn't sure what was gonna happen with the batteries, the, the, the access batteries in the cold. I think that I think the life can deteriorate a, quite a bit in the cold. Um, so he just didn't wanna run, run that risk, ran mechanical. Um, yeah he didn't have any problems with his bike but uh yeah did have a problem staying on it which <laughs> which unfortunately ended um in a dnf for manu on, which is a real shame um but yeah again he's again tail fin stuff these fancy packs i've not managed to get my hand on one of these latest iterations um but i really do want one because they they do look really awesome um and then some again some production stuff some custom stuff but yeah exciting stuff coming from tail fin in the near future um, now the next bike, uh, it's not actually from this year's race, it's from last year's race, but I just thought I'd show kind of a bit of an evolution um, of Sofian's 
bike. So he's now won it three times in a row. This was from 2022. Um, incidentally, I'm gonna have a chat with Sofian, uh, a bit of a, I guess an interview and a bit of a chat about this year's race. So keep an eye out for that in the coming days. Um, so yeah, Sofian riding for Vitus and this is the bike he rode last year. Um, so again, Sid Fork, he's running these the same custom hump wheels um, that, that, that myself and, uh, well, Manny wasn't riding them, but a few of the other riders have been riding. Um, he's on these Renners, um, Fleecer Ridge tires, 55 mil, super fast rolling, super subtle. They're basically a big gravel tire. So they're not gonna give you kind of the grip you need like on a mountain bike trail. But for, the, for like the Silk Road, you're not really, you're not doing mountain biking or, you know, on the whole. So it's a lot of dirt roads um, and they're, they're super fast, really efficient. Uh, I run them myself. Um, so yeah, um, Sofian, been running runners for a while. Um, so yeah, they're super efficient. Um, if you get the endurance casing, they're, they're pretty bomb proof as well. Um, so yeah, Miss Great Bags, um, Aero Bars, uh, no front bag last year, but a full frame pack and loads of stuff in the back there. But then if we have a look at what he was running this year, so bear in mind, both these bikes have been used to, to win the Silk Road, but this year he's on the Vitus again, but he's gone full suspension. So Sofian actually, like I, 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 I'm, I knew Sofian fairly well. Um, and stayed with him up at the Highland Trail. And he, he was asking me before Highland Trail, I know, is it is it worth, you know, getting a, a full suspension mountain bike for Highland Trail? Because I'm only going to use it once, you know, I'll only use it at the Highland Trail. It seems like a bit of a waste of a bike. Uh, and I said to him, well, just, just get the bike for Highland Trail because it would definitely be faster. Um, and then he loved it and ended up riding riding it for the Silk Road Mountain Race as well. So obviously the, the, the downside of a full suspension bike is that the shock's in the middle of the frame. So the triangle is a bit smaller. However, um, he's kind of got around this by using this new Miss Grape front cradle and bag uh, and a smaller rear pack. So he's kind of just, it's probably a better balanced bike now. Um, and yeah, I mean, full suspension is going to be a massive benefit for, for the Silk Road. Um, mainly because there's, uh, there's so much rough track, you know, and it just, it's just going to save your, your energy over time. However, there is more to go wrong. You know, there's more bearings, there's an extra shock. Um, so it's kind of like balancing out, you know, what you think is going to be best. That's why a lot of people still use hardtails in, the, in this kind of event. Um, but yeah, Sofian went for full suspension. He won again. So, you know, he's also won it on a hardtail with, with front suspension and he's also won it fully rigid. So um, maybe the maybe the bike actually makes no difference. Um, but again, he's running these custom hunt wheels um, and his Renner's tires. So he's won every single edition of uh, waste three editions of the Silk Road Mountain Race on the Renner's Fleece Ridge 55 millimeters. Uh, I think he's running endurance casing. Um, he actually ran the ultralight casing the first year, hoping to save some weight and then spent a lot of time fixing punctures. So, um, you know, make of that what you will. Um, the next bike I found um, is actually from Katia Kircher, but um, the, I find these, these quite interesting. Now we, we just touched on full suspension. Let me move my face out of the way. Um, these these Scots, I think this is this. I don't know if this is Spark or the Genius, but there's a couple of brands now um, who are doing kind of full suspension mountain bikes with a hidden shock, which gives you a bit more of an open frame. So you can see the shock is actually, if you can see my mouse cursor, it's hid, hidden behind the, the crank set there. Um, so it's totally tucked out of the way. In theory, tucked out of the dirt and the elements, um, and it gives you a bit more of an open frame space. Now there's there's other kind of um, bikes, I think Trek do one, Specialized do one with a shock in the top, which again gives you a bit more of an open triangle. Now I think these are probably going to be a pretty good bike packing bike, um, mainly because you get the benefit of full suspension, but you also get like an open frame and a bit more space. Um, however, I guess the caveat is, you know, you're, you're still going to be, you've still got a lot more bearings, you know, if something goes wrong with that shock, you're not going to get it repaired, not in a race anyway, um, and it's hidden away. So. I don't know, it's still a toss up. I think maybe for one of the shorter events, you know, maybe if we're talking like Atlas Mountain Race, four days and dry, you, I reckon you'd definitely be faster on one of these. If we're going on a longer event, maybe Tour Divide, I think in theory you'd be faster, but if something goes wrong, then it could end your race. So again, there's there's a debate to be had about that. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's quite interesting. Um, and then steel is real. Let's get on to the, 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 the final three bikes. Um, so this is James Hayden's Fairlight. Uh, it's the Holt, and I think it's 100, 120 mil sit on the front there. Uh, what wheels are you running? Are they beast rims and Hope hubs. I mean, it's got the, the purple anodized Hope bits, which all look very nice and fancy. 
Again, James is on the Tailfin R&D team, so he's got the fancy custom bags. Um, one thing I do quite like is, well, I don't know if I like it or not, but James runs a full a full frame pack. He runs the bottom on the, the bottle on the bottom here, but he runs his other bottle on the top tube. Now I found that, like I've already said, I found that my bottom bottle got quite covered in crap basically. Um, but I can, but I, I'm, I am wondering whether I can actually run one on the top. Um, I'm going to play around with it. However, I don't like the fact that it then gets in the way of your standover. So I don't know. It's uh, th th There's a number of solutions to be found. Um, so I need to play around. But again, yeah, James, very similar setup actually to that of Manu and, and myself, as you'll see shortly. He knows what he's doing. He's got the Cane Creek, I think it's a Thud Buster uh, suspension seat post. Um, I actually I spoke to him after last year's race and he's like, yeah, I, I, I took it off to Safeway and I regretted it. So he's put that... That suspension seat post on there um again I, I used a redshift one and it was 100 percent the best thing to do i mean if you're running a hardtail for the secret silk road mountain race i would i would 100 percent fit a shock post yes it's heavier but you won't regret it um you know comfort is is key uh, and there's some real real rough roads so yeah you will not regret that um uh, and then on to the next bike angus young um Obviously, running a Mason, uh, a brand very close to my heart. Uh, so he's run the GRX. He's got GRX shifters um, and a GRX rear cassette. Um, quite a big chain ring for the Silk Road, but Angus is a strong guy. Unfortunately, he did get ill. Sickness is a thing on the Silk Road, and yeah, he, he did get sick. I do wonder maybe his bottles, his only bottle is in the firing line from all the crap. So I do wonder if maybe he just got a stomach infection from um, some bacteria. Again, running these custom hunt wheels. So he's running the Mason in search of, which is kind of their drop bar bike. I've, I'm obviously sponsored by Mason, um, brand very close to my heart. I've been running them since 2015 on the on the Transcontinental race, and you know had a bit of input in this bike. Um, so I've finished Tour Divide on this, so very comfortable on it. Did actually tubing, still tubing. Um, he's uh, Angus actually fitted a SID fork on the front, so 100 mil SID fork fits in there. The, the geometry is adjusted just to take a bit of a uh, shock out. And then he's running this restrap full frame bag. I think it's a custom one. Um, so yeah, nice and neat. Um, but yeah, unfortunately Angus just wasn't able to show himself uh, properly just, just due to getting sick. Um, so yeah, so saved everyone else a little bit, I guess, but uh, he's, he's a strong guy. Um, and then the final bike, um, just gonna finish with my one. Um, so this this is actually the same, pretty much the same tube set as Angus's bike. Did actually tubing. The only difference is the seat tube, which is a Reynolds on the Raw. So the Raw is Mason's mountain bike. Um, I decided to go with this just because I, I just wanted a bit more comfort on the long descents. Um, I found I've been riding drop bars for a while, like actually the, the in search of that that the Angus is riding. Um, but I found on a long descent, it just kind of like tightens your shoulders up and. When you're climbing uphill for a long time, I was finding that actually having my heads, heads on the hood, hands on the hoods, my, my arms were a bit close together. Um, so I wanted to have my arms wider just to relax my neck and upper back. And it, it kind of worked quite well. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think mountain bikes, hardtail mountain bikes are probably the go-to for this kind of event. Um, so yeah, 120 SID fork on there. Again, these custom hump wheels, Renner's fleece ridge tires. Uh, I just ran a mechanical um, Shimano XT 12 speed. Nothing really to go wrong with it, just works. Um, as you can see, I've got, again, the, the custom stuff from Tailfin. Um, if you want to see more details, I've got a full video into this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. This is an older prototype pack. Um, got my bottles in, one in the frame. As I said, I would either, for next time, put this down tube bottle on the top tube like James Hayden, or maybe carry a bottle like Tristan had. Um, which is kind of sealed because in the end I ended up decanting the, the water from this bottle into the one in the frame just because there was so much crap and dirt on it and I was just trying to avoid getting sick. Um, but yeah, the bike worked fine, no problems. Um, could make it a little bit lighter in future. Um, I'm hoping that Mason can bring out maybe a little bit of a lighter frame, which we're working on. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, all, uh, that's, that's all theory for next time. But yeah, this worked really well for me um, and I was pretty damn pleased with it. So yeah, that's that's just a, a little roundup of some bikes for the Silk Road Mountain Race. What would I use if I went again? Probably a aluminium hardtail um, or a carbon hardtail if, if I had the option. Definitely suspension, uh, definitely some kind of shock post. Um, I may consider a full suspension if I had the option, but there is a little question about reliability. I mean, most modern bikes are pretty damn good, but 
there's always that question mark. And if something goes wrong in Kurdistan, you're not going to get it fixed. So, you know, hardtail is a little bit more reliable. Uh, probably go for mechanical shifting just because, again, reliability, easy to fix, less to charge. Um, definitely go for a dynamo wheel set. Um, you need to be pretty self-sufficient. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'd use for the Silk Road Manta Race. I hope, hope you enjoyed this. Um, got a few more videos coming up around the Silk Road. So I shall see you again soon.